Hi, I'm Ryan. Oops. I did it again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is <laughs> Should we start over? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. That's true, Steve. This first ad was sent to us by... Greg Straub. Greg Straub. This Thanks, is, Greg. Uh, this ad says, I believe this is a 2H Lindert Custom, one-of-a-kind conductor with a pistol headstock. <laughs> Little doubt this was anything, uh, th- that this was anything by hand built by Charles... Lindert himself as the escape velocity neck, which is amazing. Someone online told me it was made for Rick Derringer. I never got to ask Charles about that before he passed. Yes, it is the coolest looking guitar on the planet, but more importantly, it is the greatest sounding player you'll ever find. It is flat out amazing. Just growls like a lion when cranked. I own a lot of guitars. This is one of the top couple, if not the best sounding guitar I own. I also own a lot of Lindert's which are some of the best guitars ever made. This is one of the best by a large margin. Which is why he's selling it, because he loves it so much. Um, it's one of the best. <laughs> it's one of the best. Asking $2,000. I feel like that's actually not bad. I don't honestly know what these go for, the Linderts, but I know that the vast majority of them were handmade by him and are mm. all kind of custom one off these sorts of things. Kind of a fancy single cut thing. Yeah. He did this wild thing where he had these cutouts of the guitar body that looked like an old, like retro, uh, like tube radio sort of thing. It makes you think there's a speaker under there, but there's not. I Don't thought worry. it looked like a spider web, but then I thought it looked like one of those old rosette stained glass. It looks like both those things. It looks like the body itself is coated in like rhino liner. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I've never touched one of these in person. So I do, I don't know actually what's going on there. Uh, but this one is different. It's very rare. Uh, it's very rare. If you cut it open, it's still pink and bleeding inside. Um, it's got a headstock shape that's different from the other uh, Linderts. It's uh, not like the other kids at the trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I like you, Stuart. Was it Stuart? Stuart. Stuart, I like you. You're not like the other kids here at the trailer park. Uh, but the the other, that's a song reference for you uh, Dead Milkman fans out there. Uh, usually the headstock is shaped like a thumbs up, like an elongated thumbs up like that. Yeah. Um, and that's not what's going on here. It's shaped like a, like a little gun, like a little pistol. No idea why he did that variation, but he really did it. Uh, this guy was not afraid to get weird with his designs. So that's for sure. I like this ad because it just says it just growls like a lion when cranked. Is it the guitar that's cranked or is it the amp that's cranked? That's my question. Well, I just think, you know, we get all these ads and somebody posted an ad, not in our group on it from a, well, somebody posted an ad in our group, making fun of somebody who posted it in a different group. Okay. Uh, that I'm was, on this journey with you, Steve. Take me to the end of it. Talking about there's this thing in like guitar culture where people, everyone wants to make their guitar a woman and they want to use a bunch of like sexual innuendos about how the guitar screams when you grab its neck and how, uh, you know, it really, really, I don't know, uh, the pickups really throb when you play its strings or the, the back of the neck gets so wet when... Are there any two screamer turning the turning the volume knob or whatever? Are there any two screamer clones called the Wilhelm? <laughs> it's just sitting right there. Someone name a two screamer the Wilhelm. Come on. Um, and they're always these like very like overly sexual, right? You know, by people where you're like, are you're probably repressed? Like you probably are an incel. It sounds like you don't want to play guitar. It but the like other you the just other part of laid. it is, it's like, is that really like? I mean, I guess like. Uh, the high notes when you bend them, you can kind of get like this. You know, there's not a lot of ba- sure. power there and whatever. But so much of it's like I like this, like this picture of like, oh, it growls like a lion. Like that makes me think of like those like big chuggy, right, Van Halen-y, you know, right, right, 
high on the, not high, high on the neck, high on the neck. You know, those first couple frets, those big chords with, yeah, a, yeah. with a lot of... What about instead you know, of, you know, like, oh, it just screams with pleasure. What if someone just said, it screams with freedom like an eagle? Or it it squeals like... A pig. <laughs> it, no, it squeals like semi-truck brakes. <laughs> Yeah. You know? It's it squeals like my loose timing belt. Yeah, there you go. Let's get more descriptive with our euphemisms, guys. Yeah. They don't all have to be sexual euphemisms. Come on. Yeah. You can do better. Yeah, and you know what? If you're going to do a sexual euphemism, I'd say get more creative, get more kinky with it. I say make it your own. There you go. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to have a sexual euphemism about a guitar, uh, make sure you are very specifically telegraphing your very specific kink. And, you know, we're not going to kink shame you, yeah. but make it something other than just, like, objectifying a woman. Uh, what I'm saying is, instead of it being about, like, like what you are purporting to do to a woman you're instead doing to this guitar and getting similar sounds, make it about what the woman or man right. is doing to you Express, to make you make you the, want, so you're using the guitar to make the same sounds that you personally make. Yes. Express your sexual desires for yourself. What you want uh, done to you by your loving partner, not uh, don't express like your fetishization of the object exactly to, to be your sexual partner say like oh this guitar makes me scream and moan like get really really into it you know this guitar what, what i'm trying to say here ryan is i feel completely is, subjugated and humiliated in an erotic way by what, this what guitar I'm, what i'm trying to say right now ryan is when i pick up this harmony i love to make this harmony Make sounds when I grab this harmony by the neck, it just makes me feel like I'm making the sounds that a uh, middle uh, m uh, male in his mid 30s who's half Asian would also make during sex if he was six foot two and 214 pounds. Yeah, the, the short and wore a size 12 shoes, the short way all of new, saying this, all new balances, only new balances. The short way of saying this is. This guitar makes me... This guitar sounds the way I do when I'm having sex. <laughs> and also, you know what? You know what? There's enough... Uh, there's enough room out there for all you uh, lady guitarists out there uh, to completely objectify men in your descriptions. <laughs> Of your musical instruments. That's really the ad I want to see. I want to see the reverse of this. I want to see. Oh, this know. guitar is rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> this guitar can go all night long, but still is ready to cuddle and talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> this gu this guitar is emotionally supportive. <laughs> this guitar will never leave the house before the sun rises. <laughs> I feel bad that now we're leaning into stereotypes about what men what women want in their sexual is that partners. What, what women want? I just thought that's what decent people, a decent person would that's do. That's what a decent person wants. But they are stereotypes for what women want. But when real what this they, this guitar will make you breakfast. What they really want is to have, you know, dirty, satisfying sex, just like men. So. Hey, how about we just write a guitar ad that says, "Hey, the the shreddy notes on this guitar sound like the shreddy notes on a Van, on a Van Halen album. The chugga chuggas on this guitar sound like the chugga chuggas." From a Metallica album. What if instead of... I, it's crazy that we went down this line of discussion about this guitar that doesn't deserve it. But <laughs> what if instead of sexual euphemisms, you just did completely emotional euphemisms? Like, this guitar will make you cry like your dog just died. <laughs> Yikes. This guitar will make you happy like it's your wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> but then someone's just going to be like, this guitar will make you, will fill you with joy. Like the first time you had sex. Yeah. Back to sex. <laughs> just coming, coming all around here. This, I, now people just need to shorten it up. We get it. Just shorten it up. Just say, this guitar reminds me of sex. <laughs> the neck. And then leave, and then leave it at that. Don't explain it at all. Just reminds me of sex. 
The neck, sex. The pickups, sex. The strings, sex. sex. The why, knobs, sex. Why use many word when few do trick? Yeah. Is all I'm saying. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know anything about Lindert's. This guitar looks cool, I guess, for $2,000, as long as it plays good and you know what you're getting into. Sure, why not? If you want it, it's missing a knob. Uh, if you uh -oh. want to educate me on Lindert's guitars, because I will probably forget to look it up, uh, send us an email at 60cyclehomecast at gmail.com or, just or comment leave a comment on the video. On the video, on the Facebook group, whatever. Give us the dirt on the Linderts. There you go. Ooh, there yeah. you go. Hey, what's new, Steve? What's new, and we didn't mention this uh, Yeah, we feel bad about episode, it, sorry. But that's okay, because I think they're like a quarterly release or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, we were written up in what I presume is a lovely article because I haven't read it yet. I read it I, because I was sent a screen. I was sent a picture of the spread. I'll send it to you, Steve. Of so the you, whole thing? Of, you, of the whole thing. So you can wow. read it as well. Uh, a very lovely article written Bye. about you and me. Yeah. And this room was pictured within mm -hmm. the article. A two-page spread, Steve. Can you believe it? In the fretboard journal. Yeah, written by Emily Harris from the Get Offset podcast I and gotta, sunday crush the band sunday i gotta crush. say you haven't read it yet but I'll, I'll send you that picture uh, i mean by the time this airs i may have read it because i have a copy of this coming to my house what you spent money steve i spent money to Damn, get dude. the entire uh the entire piece watch it's the gonna, entire magazine it's gonna turn out that it is a 10 page article and emily only sent me the first two pages <laughs> because the rest of it just drag us through the mud but no, it's, it's a very little, nice little write-up, and we did an interview with her uh, a while back, yeah. and I've honestly been sitting on my hands like, oh, man, we just kind of rambled and said a bunch of nonsense, and I have no idea like what format is this going to be. I forgot that that's how that happened. I don't even remember doing the interview. <laughs> <laughs> we just chatted for a long time, and she did an excellent job of taking the best bits and weaving a narrative that's very fair and very uh, like true to who would you we are. Would you say it's fair and balanced? It's fair and balanced. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I think she did a great job. And uh, I mean, the, the only thing she got wrong is that she said we were coming up on 500 episodes and we are coming up on Three, 355 episodes. Yeah. I mean, if you count all our extra special episodes, that might be true. That's pro that might be where. Oh, that all number, the episodes. That might be where that comes from. Because I think if you mm. go on our pod bean. Right. And you add up all of the, we're definitely over 400 at least. Wow. There you go. Once you factor in episodes. So that's whatnot. probably closer to correct than I realized. But anyways, yeah. If you, uh, if you see a, a copy of the fretboard journal laying around, pick it up, look for the uh, little write up about us. Uh, if you want to do what Steve did and buy it, that's certainly a thing you could do. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited. We're in print, Steve. We're, yeah. we're, you know, we're in a magazine. Is this the first time you've been in a magazine? It's, I think it is. Well, unless you count the albums that we had reviewed in city beat. <laughs> that, don't, that don't mention me by name. Those don't count, and those are weekly, Steve. They're not quarterly. Yeah. This is a this is a digest. They're also not national distribution, like this is international a, or whatever distribution. This is a journal, Steve. It is actually pretty amazing that we can I put this on my LinkedIn. <laughs> got two pages in what is a pretty reputable magazine. Yeah. I think there's like and a big photo too. I think there's like uh, the actually I wasn't when uh, when I saw somebody I, I don't know if it was Emily or someone actually I don't think it was Emily it was someone else said that we were in it in this uh, magazine I went to their website and I looked at the cover and I don't think there was any mention of it there was a mention of like a bunch of like big big time right no we're not a, we're not a cover you know, story. We're not listed on the front of the well, yeah. magazine. And so it's like, but it's really cool to be featured in a, in a magazine that actually has a lot of, of important musicians. A pretty cool magazine. Yeah. It's a, I'm going to say fretboard journal is a cool magazine and I've dragged on magazines before and I will again in the future, but I think fretboard journal is a, is a quality, uh, yeah. I think they, they go above them. There's, there's a handful that go above and beyond. And then there's the rest of them do, uh, the mag the magazine thing. Kind as far as I'm back. aware, they've never done a uh, a bikini or lingerie uh, uh, pub like magazine. Don't get or any like ideas, a, Jason. Like a swimsuit edition, but I uh, I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> 
to be in the first one. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> um, so Do you yeah, have anything that's else? Our, that's our only what's new, I think. Everything else I just say in the videos that I do. So, uh, so I don't know. Do you have anything else new in your life? We're all rich and famous now. A week later. I don't have anything new. Thanksgiving happened. How was your Thanksgiving, Steve? Uh, well, I'm uh, going to, I went to, presumably, uh -huh. my in-law's house mm. for, on Thanksgiving Day. And then I, presumably I went to my parents' house on Thanksgiving Day. So you're day. just spreading the Rona, huh? Double Thanksgiving. <sighs> Steve being irresponsible around here, just spreading the Rona around. Well, I'm the only one who, le well, no, my father and my father-in-law is a plumber, not a plumber. He's a pool man. Right. So he, he works out. with water. Yeah. He's a water man. Um, I go work in an office. No one else in my family like leaves the house. Right. Right. So I'm not actually shaming you, Steve. We're going to go see family too. <laughs> How dare you? I know. Right. But I mean, here, here is my whole thing. And by the time this episode publishes, coronavirus is probably going to be over. It's over. The vaccines are out. They work wonderfully. There's no side effects. And uh, the government can now track us with uh, Bill Gates microchips. Um, it's, it's, wonder true. it's a wonderful future we're living in now. But I'm like, my family never leaves the house. Before all this, we never left the house except for like a couple times here and there. So not much has changed for us a whole lot other than Henry's not going to school. Um, but like we see so few people that I consider us to be, you know, in a place where we can trace contact if we need to, like if one of us gets sick, we're like, okay, well we've seen three people in the last month. So we'll just call them up and let them know, you know, it's uh, it's you <laughs> it's it. And it's, you know, like two family members yeah. that we've seen. Uh, so I, I feel pretty good about, you know, where we've been in, with this whole thing. I'm sorry to bum everyone out and talk about Corona stuff. Everyone's sick about hearing about it. Yeah, I hope you guys all had a good Thanksgiving, regardless of what you did. I hope you just ate all the cranberry sauce. I hope you popped open the can and you held it over your mouth and that cylinder of cranberry sauce just dripped into your mouth and you just like inhaled the whole thing. That sounds delicious. I hope that was your Thanksgiving and I hope your whole family watched and chanted chug, 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 <laughs> chug, chug because it's tradition. For all our European listeners, they don't know what I just described, but it's tradition. It's American tradition. We all do it. Every year someone has chosen to be the cranberry chugger and it's an honor. Yeah. 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 Uh, this first sponsor spot, this episode is brought to you by Chase Bliss Audio, makers of fine pedals such as the Bliss Factory, mm -hmm. which was a limited run, but it's going to come back. Guys. Guess what, suckers? You thought you were going to flip it and make a bunch of money because it was limited edition. It's not going to be limited edition anymore. They're going to keep making it so everyone can buy it. Deal with it. There you go. Chase Bliss Audio. They make pedals more creative than you'll ever be. Not more creative than you are, more creative than you could ever hope to be. You will never be as creative as never. a chaseless pedal. That's why, nope. you know, you surround yourself with talented musicians so that they'll rub off on you. Surround yourself with talented pedals so those will rub off on you too. There's a concept, huh? Yeah. Christmas is coming up. Buy a chaseless pedal for a loved one that you cohabitate with. <laughs> Guess what? They're going to let you use it. You just bought yourself a chaseless pedal. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Wow. <laughs> hey, honey, I got you a Chase Bliss pedal. Mind if I use it every now and then? <laughs> so huge thanks to Chase Bliss for once again sponsoring the content that you love here at 60 Cycle Hum. More like 60 Cycle Fun, am yeah. I right? <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the next thing we're going to talk about? A topic? We are going to talk about a topic. Um I don't know how you want to approach this, but we got sent a uh, opportunity to market something that we are not going to market. I want to approach it with laughter and love in our hearts. Um, I I just don't, you know, you do, you basically work as a one man semi PR firm. I guess that's one way, way to put it. Sure. Sure. Um, and so I, you know, I definitely understand that people get tasked with promote this thing, but I'm going to give you limited 
these promotional agencies have very limited resources. I don't even want to talk about that angle of it. I just want to talk about the awkward language used in an email sent to us. Hold on. Okay. Then, hoping hold that, on. Here's what I'll do there. Okay, I'll okay. start right here. This is for a movie coming out. Take a look inside. Or sorry. Take an inside look at the life and career of the legendary guitarist and top selling blues artist. Is it Eric Clapton? Is it Bibi King? Is it Peter Green? <laughs> no, it's none of those talented, well-known blues guitarists. Joe Bonamassa! Massa, 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 Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. In the right all, next to the gun show, Joe Bonamassa. In the all-new film, Guitar Man. Joe Bonamassa has single-handedly transformed blues from a marginalized <sighs> legacy genre to an arena-filling spectacle. Interviews and concert footage chronicle his extraordinary rise as a guitar wonderkin mentored by B.B. King and praised by John Lee Hooker and his experiences in the cutthroat music business. Do you remember when you were a kid mm -hmm. and you'd turn on PBS mm -hmm. and you were like, man, what is this blues music? I I keep hearing about the blues but I don't what know is what it is. What is marginalized genre that no one ever uh, has ever been exposed to or heard of ever before? I would just wish that someone would come along and shine a light on this genre that is so obscure so that I could learn more about it. If only there was someone who could save this genre single-handedly and turn it into an entertainment spectacle worthy of filling arenas. <laughs> Despite neglect from the entertainment industry, Joe's independent approach sees him sell out concerts around the world, even hosting heroes like Eric Clapton at Royal Albert Hall. Joe has 22 number one blues albums, more than any other artist, including B.B. King, Eric Clapton, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Although Bonamassa is still virtually unknown, his efforts and collaborations have brought the blues to new heights and broader audiences. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the inner circle. Oh, man. Uh, and one person pointed out, I pointed this, I, I brought this up and you were like, yeah, no kidding. Uh, you want to know how many number one blues albums Stevie Ray Vaughan has had? None. None. You know why? Cause he died before that was a thing. Yeah, they that's cheating. Joe's PR team that came up with this ad copy. Maybe Joe helped. I don't know, but that's it's just flat out BS to be like, oh, the most number one albums of any blues artist ever. You're cheating because it wasn't a category. Yeah, uh, apparently someone in the group pointed out that the. The Billboard Blues charts debuted in 1995. So, like, literally all of these artists may, who are mentioned, Eric Clapton, Stevie Ray, Stevie Ray Vaughan was dead. Eric Clapton, B.B. King, they were already, I would say, I, I mean, is it fair to say they're past the prime of their careers? They were already, like, legends right. before this chart existed. The way this copy is written, it makes it sound like no one had heard of the blues. And Joe saved the genre. It's so pretentious and so icky. Like, I get it. I get that PR agents and like the people who write this copy have to like puff it up and be like, oh, ma this person's important. Like you want to be involved with this. Um, they want us to promote this movie, by the way, which I guess we're kind of doing right now. They wanted to send us uh, download codes for it. Uh, my response was, here's our marketing rates. <laughs> If yeah. you want to be serious about this. And it turned out that the PR firm does not have any budget, uh, does not have any ability to uh, work out any other sort of different deal. They simply want advertising through podcasts in exchange for download codes. Now, I will say that Joe Bonamassa's uh, 2014 album, Different Shades of Blue, apparently hit number eight on the main Billboard charts, which kind of blows my mind a little. I know, he, he sells a ton of albums. And for someone who sells a ton of albums, he doesn't, he, it's icky for him to act like, or for the copy, his PR team to act like, 
Oh, she's been completely ignored by the entertainment industry. What do right. you want? It's kind of a well, and What do you and want? It's such a it's such a I don't get narrow, it. It's such a narrow genre. Why why this victim mentality in an email trying to promote you? That is so icky and weird. Yeah. I because probably people who are into him identify with that as like, "Oh yeah, like we're I'm getting this to, short in the, of the stick here. I try to talk to my friends about Joe Bonamassa, and they're like, I don't know who that is because I'm the only one who knows who, the, who, who he is. Like me and the 5,000 people, other 5,000 people at Royal Albert Hall. Right, it, right. I, you know, I, this, this, guy, this guy who who sells out stadiums and we all buy his CDs, he's getting the short end of the entertainment stick over here. He's not getting the recognition he deserves. You know, it's, it's that boomer mentality. Of like, oh, famous guy I like isn't being featured in pop radio like Lady Gaga or Justin Bieber. Like, get over it. Those are kind of dated references. I know, but, but that's the kind of references a boomer would make. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's a perfect comparison, Steve. I just hope 2021 brings us a Billie Eilish, Joe Bonamassa. Do you have any? I want a Cardi B, Joe Bonamassa. <laughs> Do you have any? You know what? Honestly, if Joe, st please listen to this, Joe. Uh, don't write your own songs. Go be a gunslinger on pop acts you know, tracks, go be it, go do it. Like, you don't, you don't have to start at the top. Go find, go find, you know, someone down the ladder and drop a guitar lick that gets sampled over and over again in a hip hop song. Try you it kind out. Kind of like what Stevie Ray Vaughan did on with, uh, playing lead guitar for, uh, David Bowie. Sure. There you go. I mean, you don't have to find the David Bowie equivalent, but go, go find a pop right. act, go find a pop act to drop some guitar into and uh, you know, make some music where someone else has taken the reins for a while. I think I think Joe is a is a fine guitar player. I think he's oh, yeah. a, a great guitar player. But man, there's just so something so cringy about the way he's presented. And I suppose it works. I suppose it works for his audience. Yeah, I, he's he's he is like very talented. Uh, he was not gifted to have the smarmy outsider charm of a John Mayer. Uh, I don't think he has the, or at least he hasn't shown the pop song craftsmanship that John Mayer has. No, not at all. Um, but you know, he, he is a, he's a really good guitar player in a, you know, making music in a, in a very limited genre. But yeah, the idea that when, when it, I, I don't think if you go to like the average person and you say, you know, who, who's your, who's a great blues guitarist that the average music, I should say average, like music listener, rock music listener. Sure. Um, you know, I think people, it's not like people forgot who Eric Clapton was. And this does almost everyone has copy almost presents it as like BB King found him. And then he made BB King relevant. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, I remember watching BB King on. Like, he gave this he gave this Clapton kid a chance. I remember <laughs> seeing BB King on like Sesame Street, man. You know, almost every person uh, who's you know had any sort of influence by Western music knows the name BB King. It's in their head, whether they know what his music sounds like or not. They know that's the name of a blues guitarist. Like I'm certain, you know various relatives I have who know nothing about music would be like, Oh yeah, I know I have a vague idea of who baby King. I is. think that's the real problem is Joe Bonamassa needs to go on Sesame street. That's it. That's it. All right. Paramount movie studios. It would be funny to have a musician go on Sesame street and it's like a counting bit and they can only count to four just over and over and over oh, again. That's a good one. That's a good bit. That's a good one. <laughs> One, two, maybe, three, maybe four, since one, he's a blues two. guitarist, how many, how many notes are in a blues scale? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, is there like, do they just play, you just play pentatonics and blues or, or are there more, more notes? Uh, Gosh, the, I sound the so. Blue, no, the blues scale has a couple extra notes on top of the pentatonic. There's a couple notes yeah, that so bridge it together. So they can only count how many number of notes. I don't play the blues guys. I don't know. I barely play guitar. It's just that one five seven, right? That's the blues chord progression. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. E A B one five seven. 
That's one one. That's one four five. Did I do that wrong? Whatever. It's late. Yeah, that's all one four five. Whatever. Why did it take me so long to figure that out? I don't know. Um, yeah, I you know I don't know. I'm I watched the trailer for this. It looks interestingly ish, but it's like so. Like I didn't said, watch it's like the trailer. So um, it is like unless unless there's some sort of like edge or twist to this documentary. I, I personally have no interest. I just like I I picture this as like imagine they made uh it might get loud and they advertise it might get loud as three iconic guitars who put rock music on the map in three different generations, but then it was like the guitar player from um you can do it why from uh I don't know from Quiet Riot and uh the guitar player from Duran Duran and uh, the guitar, instead of Jack White, it's the guitar player from Matchbox 20. Right, right. The one that's not Santana. Like slightly more obscure. But honestly, like those- That's probably even too obscure because I couldn't even name those people. But you know what I mean? It's like, it's something where it's like, no, it's like, I I can even see the argument being made that- the, the difference like is the, that, that those artists have songs on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> That's what I was saying earlier, Joe. You need to you need to uh, collaborate with someone who can get you on the radio or get you into songs that are being heard, yeah. used in soundtracks and things like that. You if you you don't sit around and belly ache and have your PR team put like belly aching things in your press releases, like oh, not getting recognized by the entertainment industry. Go out there. And find the people that are and collaborate with the them. The flip side of it is clearly somebody in some entertainment industry has noticed him because he's getting a freaking documentary put out by the same people who make Star Trek. Right. Paramount. So, it's a Paramount movie. Uh, he's doing just fine. All this belly aching is pathetic. Suck it up, Joe. Of course, this now I feel like this is like the ultimate guitar column where he says something about how, like, don't learn how to play guitar, not play guitar pedals. And everyone gets worked up. I feel like that's us right now. We're just getting sure. worked up. It's We're fun giving now. Joe Bonamassa all this free advertising. It's fun. Are you having fun? I'm always having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good time. Yeah. You want to do this ad? This bass was sent by Josh Shaw. It says, bass is in good condition. I just don't play anymore. How do you gauge the condition of this bass? I'm not saying it's bad. I'm, it's home done. It kind of reminds me of a wish base. It's very wild. Not wish.com, but a wish base. That's a brand. No, it is kind of a wish.com base. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wish.com version of a wish base. Does it come with the amp? Uh, I'm may- assuming maybe, it comes with that since amp. Since they're not playing anymore. That's a cool amp. It's a combo 300, a PV, by the way. It's a big boy. It's a big boy. Well, not that big, but bigger than you need for your, your it's home. It's like a 15. Yeah, sure. I don't know. It's not a stack or anything like that. 300 it's, watts, Ryan. It's a little combo. Presumably. It's a little combo. It's a big combo. But isn't 300 is like the start of wattage for most gigging? Yeah, I mean, if you're amps? a serious bass player, you need at least, I don't know, 1,500 watts. Yeah, 1,500. That's like your entry level, like garage rock yeah. amount of wattage. It's to get that low end head run. Um, If you think you're going to be playing in bars, you're going to want at least 2,500 watts. Um, I'm saying like, that's like a, a 30, Listen, seat. that's like a 30 seater. Uh, once you're moving into like venues, like, like our local venue, like Soma where Soma side stage, it fits like maybe 200 people for bass. You're probably going to want about 3,500 Watts. Listen, if your bass tone can't cook a baked potato, then what are you even doing? You need maximum power with these. Things. After you move past the small venue size at that two hundred and uh, that two hundred seater, basically you want to take the number of seats that will fit in the room. A watt per seat and a watt per seat. Yeah. So if you're uh, if you're going into, I mean that is um, we don't even need to talk about this because well, that I is a say, tried and true it's not, uh, it's calculation. Not a watt, it's not a watt per seat. It's ten watts per seat. So if you're in a thousand, Damn. if you got a thousand seat auditorium, you need a ten thousand watt amp. Um. If you're in, if you're in Royal Albert Hall again, yeah. 
that's a 5,000 seat arena. You need a 50,000 watt base. Imagine app. playing in Royal, Royal Albert Hall and giving a no name act like Eric Clapton a chance. Crap, uh, Eric Crapton. Eric Crapton a chance, like making his career for him by having him as a guest. Like, can you believe that? <laughs> Single handedly bringing attention to an entire genre we're still on this attention to an entire genre that has been completely ignored no one has ever heard of a genre and you've saved it you've dusted it off no one's ever even heard this music before and you have brought it to light look ryan all i'm saying is if whatever whatever booking agent is trying to get me to play royal albert hall is going to provide me a backline with less than forty thousand watts i'm not even going to pick up the phone seriously I don't know what to say about this. 10 base. watts per seat. Yeah, we're not even talking about the seat because we're just so hung it's up like on a, bottom It's <laughs> a single jazz pickup. I think it's got charm. I, oh, it's definitely charming. It's the, definitely like outsider the art. The action looks okay. It looks fine from what we can tell. The headstock is a, uh, is a freaking <laughs> eldritch nightmare. Yeah, what is going on there? So it looks like... it. Okay, we'll describe this for the podcast listeners. It looks like the body is completely homemade. The shapes and the curves are really wonky. Um, it's a Les Paul. It's kind of a Les Paul. It's a single cut. It's a single cut viola. It's a slightly melted Les Paul shape. No, it's a single. That's what the shape okay. is. It's a single cut, like a single cut cello. Uh, but it looks like a thin body. This very cello. rounded on the edges. Yeah, it has a giant wooden. A uh, bridge saddle, not yeah. adjustable, just kind of like a big like cello saddle. It's like an old school like fifties arch top kind of. Yeah, yeah, saddle. yeah. But then it has a bolt on neck that looks like it started out as a P base. Maybe it's yeah. a huge headstock. And then they like chop chop the knob off and like back that thing up. Yeah, they they definitely uh, gave this thing a circumcision. The knob has been chopped clean off the top. Uh, <laughs> I almost I wonder what that headstock was before because it looks huge. They cut the they cut the tip off like we mentioned and moved the uh, the the G string down to the lower edge of it. So it's kind of this big like offset paddle headstock. Mm -hmm. I I want to say that the body of the of the base is extra small based on how big that headstock looks. Um, I think it is a small bodied base. Oh yeah, it's a very small body base. It's got that small body base. Are you body shaming this base? I'm not sh I, I think it's cute. I honestly, if you know, I that can kind of be demeaning too. Like some people don't want whether it's, it's handsome. You don't have to say that it's compact. Like when you tell someone that they're beautiful, you're it, even though it's positive, it's like saying like, oh, you're Asian. You must be good at math. It's like, what if I'm not good at math? Now it's an insult. Okay. You're putting too much pressure. I'm putting too much pressure on this bass guitar. By telling it it's cute. What if it doesn't feel cute? Now it feels pressured to feel cute on t days where it doesn't feel cute. I'm just saying, Ryan, think about the things. Okay, I'll, th I'll think about it more. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> I'll be more sensitive to that bass. Uh, they want 300 bucks for it. If it comes with the with the amp. If it comes with the amp, it's worth $200. If it doesn't come with the amp, it's worth $100. I think it's worth $50. Mm, fair. Fair. If it comes with the amp, it's $150. If it doesn't come with the amp, it's $50. <laughs> I don't know. The amp might be worth a little bit more. I think the amp's probably worth a little bit more than that. But you, you got to find the right buyer for that because yeah. most people do not care about that amp. Yeah. But if you find the right buyer, they're like, I've been looking for this amp. Then you can probably get it. I think the only people like $300 a met is a mess. You got to find like a, it was down from 400. They wanted 400 yeah. for it. I feel like that's like a, that is a, uh, David Chote, oh kind yeah, kind of thing where it's like it's is probably cool in, base. It's kind of a weird thing. Is I, still in, is he still in our community? I haven't seen I don't him. Know. Post I in a see while. him on Instagram. Oh, okay, not on our Instagram, just on mine. On was, my personal. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I, that that dude was nice. Yeah. If you're still out there, David, uh, but I just want I, you to know that I think you're a nice dude. I can see him using that amp for like some super clean jazz stuff. Oh, totally, totally. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so that's that. Uh, this next sponsored ad is. I don't. This big year. It's big year pedals. Yeah. Here we are. Another sponsorship. Uh, Grant and Karen are whipping up another batch of Alpies. Gonna be well, by this point, they soon. might be sold already. They probably are. They're probably all gone. Uh, so maybe you don't want a uh, curated multi effect. Maybe you want a classic dirt box. That's the woodcutter. Yeah. Uh, maybe you want a mid gain fuzz. Like wait, wait, low. hold on there. 
the, the woodcutter is so much more than just a classic dirt box. It's a, it is an homage to the most obscure sought after version of the rat ever, Steve. Uh, the the, the wood, one made by the secret craftsman woodcutter over at Proco who would mark inside of his pedals woodcutter. He would wood sign them woodcutter. Cutter. That's what we're talking about That's here. That's right. So go check out the Big Ear Woodcutter. It is a primo style rat pedal. Yep. Big thanks to Big Ear Pedals. Grant and Karen over there are real sweethearts. Yep. We're good friends with them. Head, and, over uh, to, head over to BigEarPedals.com. They support the show often, so you should support them often. There's my pitch. All right. Uh, I think this was sent in by Michael Krauss. Was it Michael Krauss? Is it a know. topic or is it an ad? It's a topic. Oh, okay. This is a midlife crisis rig, Ryan. Oh, you're, yeah, you're yeah. coming up on that midlife crisis soon. Yeah, I might be past it, honestly. What's your rig? You might have a couple of years till your midlife crisis. Yeah, but you I, think, I think I'm, a midlife crisis implies I'm going to live to 72, and I'm not. My midlife crisis happened like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend when I was a teenager who swore that uh, he was due for his midlife crisis because he didn't plan to make it till 30. I think he's still alive. So I'm still alive too. Huge mistake. You know what? You know what? We should celebrate every year like it's our midlife crisis. There's nothing wrong with that. What is a midlife crisis other than trying to live your life to its fullest? Is that what it is? Yeah, trying to do the things. I thought a midlife crisis was like living beyond your means. I I think okay. No, it's trying to do the things that you that are your heart's desire no matter how awkward and out of your age range they happen to be getting yourself a sports car and a ponytail and that's an like earring the, that's what i'm saying like i guess i don't think of it as living life to your fullest i built it's like more like living life to the maximum extravagance that your credit limit will allow so you. i have a screen grab of the actual prompt here for the topic midlife crisis for guitar players slash musicians also known as when will ryan form a ska band when when i meet a couple horn players and they're go. down you know if i meet some horn players and they're down to clown i might join that if ska band you are a horny dude or a horny lady in the san diego hey area, horny people Horny people, hit me up. Horny, uh, non-specific. <laughs> Non-binary is fine. Yeah, non. I'm looking to start a non-binary horny project. <laughs> no, I would. I here's the thing though. I don't think I'm a good enough guitarist for Scott. You probably <laughs> you've, aren't. You've got to kind of live tight in the rhythm pocket for Scott, and I don't think that's me. So, I mean, I could do the sloppy guitar solos every now and then, but the tink, 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 like, like really? tight rhythm playing, I don't think I could pull that off. All right. I guess Dinosaur Ghost is probably my midlife crisis band. Yeah. What's your, mid, what's your, okay. I, I mean, is this like a dream rig? Because the thing is, it's like my, I feel like my midlife crisis rig is like me finally like is, I shouldn't say putting my foot down. It's not putting my foot down, but uh, it's like, getting like a pod go and like creating a tiny little space in my room. I'm like, no, this is my music space. No children allowed. <laughs> and like, so like the man cave mentality. And so it's like, I, I could see myself like, okay, I'm going to buy like, you know, uh, you know, 4,000, $5,000 guitar, but I'm going to run it through a pod go. <laughs> I'm going to buy some Dr. Is Beats this, by Dre. Are you describing what you would do or are you just, just describing what you think like a midlife crisis rig I'm is? I'm saying what I think my midlife crisis rig is. So you would get yourself a $4,000 guitar. And play it through a $500 processor. With headphones. With headphones. And it, why Because is I'm it? fitting it into the space that I currently exist in. Okay. If I had a larger space, then my midlife crisis, you know, would be... Like something complete. Like my okay. mid, my midlife crisis base rig would probably be like an acoustic 360, 361 or 370, 371 rig. One of those like whomping giant yeah. two by 15. Oh man. Like where it doesn't, you can't actually even hear it in the room because it throws the bass six feet out in front of the speaker. I was. It's I, louder at your neighbor's house than it is at your house. <laughs> Yeah, because there's not enough air left in your house to hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had my eye on this Bandmaster cab, a 70s Bandmaster Silverface cab uh, that is absolutely huge here in town. 
uh, it's the sort of cab where you look at the back of it and it's a two by 12. Yeah. But it could probably be a six by 12. Yeah. It's so huge. Oh yeah. That I would put that like a, the, the, the Fender super six. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Fender super six, the six by 10. Yeah. I'd put that on my, it's probably, the, rig. it's probably the same box for yeah. those two amps, but I was looking at that pretty hard. Like, man, that would be really beautifully physically imposing to have around the house. <laughs> <laughs> I have no need for that whatsoever, but man, I want to get that and I want to put like a super reverb head on it. Mm. Oh man. Like I have no reason to have that, but that is like, like a, like a super reverb with a huge cab underneath it or like a dual showman. Well, like we with saw a huge cab underneath it. Like there's no reason for me to have it, but having it would make like the hair stand up on the back of my neck. The same way like a midlife crisis type guy would get a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something like that and never actually be able to get it up to speed because they actually have responsibilities and stuff in their right. life. Like right. I would get this ridiculous Fender amp just to have it. And I'd know that I'd never be able to turn it all the way up. You know, I'd never yeah. be able to push it to where it actually sounds good. <laughs> and then I'd get a ponytail and an earring to go with it. I'm going to picture this. <laughs> Ponytails and earrings are the midlife crisis cliche of when I was a teen. Right. I don't think that's the cliche now. I think the cliche now would be um, dads in uh, tight pants. Uh, yeah. Like, like, like dads trying to relive their their early 2000s emo days. Ooh. You know, that's to think about this one, like doing the, doing the, the blown out hair thing and like the big bangs and whatever emo dad, that is the midlife <laughs> crisis of our generation. I'm trying to think if I know anyone who I think I look at them and I go like that person is going through a midlife crisis. I don't think our generation does it as much. I don't think we've been successful. I don't think did your, did your dad go through anything like that when you were a kid? A midlife crisis? Did he start Not like I, trying to relive his glory days? I don't think so. I don't. I don't feel like he so, did. So my dad, when he was young, he was a lifeguard and he was on mm -hmm. the the polo team and stuff like that. When he hit his midlife crisis, he started wearing speedos again at the pool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was his thing. He just wearing speedos at the pool and sitting out trying to get a tan. It's like, Dad, you're. 40 something years old. Yeah, I've yeah. got friends here at the pool and you're doing your speedo <laughs> thing. What is going on? Oh man. But I don't think I can't see myself doing that embarrassing thing. You know, right. that is the midlife crisis is doing something that you're trying to recapture your youth, but it's embarrassing now. And I don't think, you know what me getting, I've talked myself into it. Me getting a big, uh, dual showman and a giant cab, underneath it that's not a midlife crisis right that's still cool i i can treat myself but it's right. like a rig like so i is it, are you just not chasing it enough it's like is it not a midlife crisis until you also buy a dick dale strat then it becomes a midlife yeah, i crisis? think the dick dale strat puts it over into the midlife crisis territory it's for like, sure in that case like i guess my midlife crisis would probably be like buying a uh like a triple wreck oh wow like a triple wreck and like a, a high end Telecaster mm. to do that. And then finally learning some math chords. <laughs> Those good old math chords, long yeah. division chords. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are you like, if you do math chords, are you going to relearn them to be common core math chords? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to kill a whole genre of music when everyone has to start relearning. The math core to be common math core. Common core compatible. <laughs> common core compatible math rock. <laughs> like everyone's just going to throw up their hands like, I quit. This isn't the way I, this isn't what I there's, wanted to do when I learned math there's rock. There's too many steps to make this music. <laughs> you can't change math core. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next ad. Or do you want to do, is there do, 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 do. housekeeping? If, if you've made it this far, you owe it to yourself. To send us money. <laughs> uh, no, if you want to, you know, I know 20, you know what? 2020 has been a tough year. Yeah, that's true. And if it's been tough for you, don't just keep listening. You don't have to send us anything. But if you're like me and you've had steady work throughout the entire year, then maybe 
uh, you would like to throw some money at a, at a creative and it can be us at patreon.com slash 60 cycle homecast, or it can be anyone else, any other creatives that you follow that also have a Patreon. Mm, good idea. Uh, head on out. I personally send a small amount of money to a handful of podcasts. Nothing, nothing crazy, but you know, a, a dollar here and a dollar there, they, it all adds up and um, it lets those people know that uh, you're not just a, uh, a leech. <laughs> A I was, parasite. I was, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just it lets those people know that a you're blight. you're willing to to throw a little a, a little scrilla at them. You know, we love every amount of money. We love everyone that that listens without contributing to us financially. It's an extra special thing for anyone that wants to do it. I certainly don't think of any of our listeners as a blight, a leech, a parasite, or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I do, but. The, <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that want to help support the production of this show, that's what we use uh, Patreon money for. We use it for travel. We use it for production costs. We use it for equipment costs. We use it for the, the cost to host uh, yeah. the files and things I like that. I always forget that that, uh, that that is a thing. And what is it? Like, that's like uh, this money. almost $400 a year, I think. Is it? Damn. Uh, also, I mean, we pay for services like StreamYard that allow us to live stream uh half our episodes and things yeah. like that. Uh, so there's a lot of costs behind the scenes that get covered by the, uh, the Patreons and we are extremely grateful. Yeah. For also, that. if you want to support the show, we're out of end of the show music. So send us your songs to 60 cycle at gmail.com. Also, don't forget that we are taking your uh, covers of uh, long December, long December. <laughs> we are going to, oh. if we get enough of them, if I say, if we get two of them, we are going to do an episode where we play them back to back and yep. listen to long December covers. It'll if we get enough of if we get like 10 of them, we will do an episode and the episode title will just be the lo- uh, the a longest December. I say if we get more than 2, we're going to do that no matter what. A longest December. If you listen to that song twice, it is the longest December. All right, this last data was sent by Michael Krauss. This is a Dean this is Jack yeah, sure Sparrow's is. Dean. <laughs> is, yeah, that's a good uh, way to describe custom it. Custom wood burn Dean Vendetta works, but electronics are spotty and may need replacing. Great price for a customized piece of functional art. This looks like the octopus painting, or it's a print painting, whatever, that I got. It kind of has that style of old-timey. Right. Pi- uh, They're trying to do octopus. the old treasure map kind of theme because it's got the nautical uh, star. Well, not the star, the, the compass. Yeah. It's got a couple of the nautical compass. M- mon- mandala kind of style flowers. Yeah, I don't really understand what's going on with the flowers and the details on the bottom horn. Um, I kind of wish they had leaned further into the nautical theme. Yeah. The, the How about octop- some anchors? How about a boat? How about just like one of those funky fishes with like the dog face that's out in the middle of the ocean? You know, that's fun. How about a skull and crossbones? Yeah, yeah. Put like a ruby. I bet there's like ruby, uh, like like, uh, uh, rhinestone style guitar knobs out there. You put one of those on there. Get a little bit of pirate treasure going on. Yar. Get like a gold hardware. Get uh, get like like a red or purple velvet guitar strap to go with it. You, you got to push it full pirate. If you're going to go a little bit pirate, you got to go full pirate. How about some swords? Swords. S words on here. Yeah. Make it a full pirate guitar. Uh, the art is kind of okay. I mean, there's some detail there. I think it's one of those things that's going to look good on stage from 10, 20 feet away. But up close, man, I'm looking at that octopus face and it's kind of wonky. Well, it's wonky. kind of it's kind of funny because it says it's a wood burning and maybe I would almost say like maybe in person it looks better because here it just looks like sharpie. Well, yeah, I think it'll look burned in person, but I'm just talking about the quality of the art. I right. don't I don't understand a bunch of these details down on the lower horn. Yeah, I don't understand what that's Ooh. supposed to be. What is that? It's like a city. Honestly, they should the Eiffel Tower. They could have also dumped the nautical themes and just done more of these Mandela flower burst things. Yeah. And that would actually have been kind of fun in a paisley sort of way. Yeah. They could have just done a full explorer theme and just done a bunch of compasses. All kinds of compass. Yeah, that's a compass fetish guitar. Like, yeah. oh, I just love comp- compasses. Like, I don't care about like 
nautical travels. I just like compasses in general. Also, this is a Dean Vendetta, but twice in the ad they refer to it as a Vendetta. They should have done a Dodge Caravan tribute guitar. Oh, yeah. The whole guitar is just the Chrysler Dodge Mopar logo, that like Pentagon thing. Yeah, yeah. And then a bunch of drawings of classic Dodge Caravans from the well, late 1980s. It has, it's a wood guitar. So what they would need to do is frame like a center stripe of the guitar uh, with like like chrome piping and then paint the outside mm. edges like a light baby blue. There we go. So it makes there it look go. like it's got that fake wood paneling of the uh, old Dodge Caravans. Oh, man, that'd be sick. That'd be pretty sick to have a Dodge Caravan themed Dean. Yeah. Then it would be a Dean Vandetta. Yeah, there you go. We did it, Steve. We solved this guitar. Uh, they only want 130 bucks for this. I'm sure these guitars aren't worth a ton yeah. in unmolested condition. For 130 bucks, I mean, this could be a project starter for someone. I don't hate it. If, you, if you've if you got a nautical theme in your band or whatever, I don't hate it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's probably still a little steep. But You're going soft. I'm one, going soft. 130. This is probably a uh, one of the... Uh, you know what? This I don't think this is one of the real cheap ones. The real cheap ones are like the same price, 130. This might be a, like a I'm $200 one. I'm getting a 275 vibe off of this mm -hmm. new. I have no idea if that's accurate or not. Correct us in the comments. But that's what I feel like this guitar would have been priced at new. Uh, 130. Yeah, if, if you think about it in that terms, it, since the body has been burned in an amateurish sort of way, uh, 130 might be steep, but I bet you, know you what? I'm looking closer. This might've been one of the Polonia ones and they just stripped the top mm. to make it like a lighter color. I mean, you could save this with a belt sander. You could take it down to raw wood again. Yeah, but then it's definitely, I think, I think they are, up but then you I lose the octopus. Up, I think they are up, up charging maybe ever so slightly. Yeah. Well, I don't think you're paying for the art. I think they just have no idea what it's worth. They have no idea what it's worth. Like, I don't think this is a situation where they're like, oh, I've done this wonderful art. Please pay me for it. Like, I think they're just yeah. like, oh, what, what, is, what is it worth? Try for Why one. Why do I have this? Try for 130. We'll see what happens. You know, I bet if you offered them 75 bucks, they'd let you take it. Boom. All right. Well, we got to the end. <laughs> we made, oh my gosh, we made it to the end. We don't have a song, so I'm going to find something uh, international and weird to play at the end here. And maybe I'll play, uh, I, I used to like to play the Mexican national anthem <laughs> after, 91X. after our episodes without a song because that's what a local radio station would do, 91X. Yeah. At, you know, at midnight, every night, they would play the Mexican national anthem. So maybe uh, I'll do that. So anyways, thanks for watching, listening, all those things. Stay uh, grounded. Leave a re review for oh, us on iTunes if you want that. to. And uh, oh yeah, and record uh, your cover of A Long December and stay grounded. Yeah. Bye everybody.